back to that image. So it says next, the next evidence of bitterness says condescending communication. Condescending communication. Uh, go to Ephesians chapter 4 and 29 and uh, pull up the definition of condescend. The Ephesians chapter 4, read what you got. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So sometimes what people do when, when they're when they bitter, condescending communication, is you speaking down, you speaking down on somebody else to make yourself feel big. You, you make everything somebody else do look evil or wrong or bad just so you can feel good about yourself. That's corrupt communication. Like the scriptures say, don't put away from you corrupt communication, but use your communication to be used to build others up, to build up your brother or sister, to encourage your brother or sister in the keeping of the commandments. You have to speak things that make your brothers or sisters you, you, when somebody have a have condescending communication, everything that they speak is to make you feel low, and them feel high, because they trying to they trying to max, they pain and they they trying to max they feeling little because they got resentment by making you feel littler than them. That's a ev that's a sign and an evidence of bad communication. Yeah, read that definition, the condescending communication. The definition of condescend. You want the first or second? Uh, you can read. We can read both of them. Okay. Show feelings of superiority. Be patronizing. Do something in a haughty way, as though it is below one's dignity or level of importance. They downplay every single everything you do. They downplay it, just to make you feel low, like you ain't worth nothing, because they want to bring you down to their level. We're not supposed to roll like that. Our communication is supposed to build one another up. So if you if you if you got that spirit of that trait of bitterness, you gotta correct it. You gotta stop. You gotta you gotta learn to speak things that build your brother or sister up. Back to that image. You got uh, subtle attacks. I skipped that. Uh, criticism. Criticism goes right along with condescending communication. Where you saying you say things to make to discredit somebody else to make yourself feel better. Uh, suspicion and distrust. Suspicion and distrust. First Corinthians thirteen. Uh, I'm gonna say read verse one first. First Corinthians chapter thirteen verse one. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity. I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. So you can have all the understanding, speak multiple languages, have all this. But if you don't have charity, meaning that, that love for your brother, it's nothing. It means nothing. Uh, read the, f jump up to verse 5. Verse 5. Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. So what I want from here is that last part, because the, the, the trait was suspicion and distrust. Charity, he says, charity is not easily provoked and thinketh no evil. If you have sus a, 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 sus if you have a, a evil suspicion, that's thinking evil. That's called evil surmising. Every time your brother do, so your brother, a brother go pick up a, a, a uh, go get the vacuum and vacuum all, he's just trying to vacuum so he can show, make it look like he's trying to do something good. A sister take the initiative, pull the garbage out the bathroom or something. Oh, she's just trying to be seen. She's just trying to be seen by somebody. That's thinking evil. That's a, that's a, a bad, evil suspicion. Don't assume. You never assume somebody's motive based on what they do, what you see them doing, or based on your bad, because you had a bad experience. Now somebody else doing something, and you assuming that it's evil. They had evil intent. That's not charity. We are not to think evil. Uh, Sirach 30, no, Sirach chapter 3 and 24. Sirach chapter 3 and verse 24. The book of Sirach chapter 3 and verse 24. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion. It says many are deceived. You are led astray. 
you are um you are led astray, you have a, a, a wrong thought. You deceive, you're manipulated by your own vain opinion. You manipulated yourself because you got a vain opinion about what somebody else is doing. You have a, 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 a an assumption of somebody else's action that's not accurate and not true, based on no facts. It's all based on your feeling and how you feel bad about something that happened to you because you're holding on to it. Read. And an evil suspicion hath overthrown their judgment. And because you evil, you have an evil suspicion of somebody, your judgment is all off. You 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 dodge dipping and dodging, brothers and sisters. You have an evil thought. You don't, you 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 got a, a wall up to everybody because you think anything somebody try to do for you, you got an evil thought. Oh, he's just trying to do that to get to get to get over on me. He's trying to do that so he can hurt me just like the other person hurt me. That's all bitterness. We can't we can't roll like that as Israel. Your assumptive thoughts gon will lead you in the wrong direction of discerning situations. If you are ba if you are basing your decisions based off your bitterness, you gonna make a bad decision every single time. You gonna make the wrong decision every single time because you're basing it off you basing your decisions off of avoiding getting put into the situation that you that caused the bitterness, that caused you to be angry, that caused you to have that resentment. And that's whether it, whether it was something that happened before you came into the truth with your, with your siblings, your mother, your father, somebody being absent, somebody abusing you, somebody, all of that. You being in this truth, like, like the first scripture we read, you are a new creature. Old things have passed away. And that's every day. That's not just when you first come into the truth. Every day. You a new creature. You got a new. You, you got a new day to correct your wrongs, so that you could be that, that much closer to building up your character and building up your spirit. We got to walk where we applying the commandments and not our feelings and our emotions. Go from there. Go to uh, so some solutions. A few so, so solutions to overcome that bitter spirit. Second Corinthians thirteen and five. Second Corinthians chapter thirteen and verse five. Second Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse five. Examine yourselves. The first the thing you got to do, you have to examine yourself. You got to examine yourself, and your examin examination. Okay, why do I react like this? Why do I have outbursts of anger when somebody say something to me? Why do I why do I withdraw myself when I know that I'm not an introvert? Why do I withdraw? my gifts and my talents? Why am I not stepping out and doing what I need to do to help build up the nation of Israel? That's what you examine in your spirit. You asking your questions. Okay, why do I do this? Why would my brother sister say shalom to me? I say shalom and walk away real quick. Why do I do these things? You have to examine yourself. You got to examine your actions and you examine them to what? To the God's laws. To see if you in the spirit. Read. Examine yourselves. Whether ye be in the faith Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate. So you're examining yourself to see you see if you're walking in the footsteps of, of Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah. You're examining yourself to see if you're applying the commandments. you examining why did you why why you react negatively to certain situations, to things that happened in your past, whether it be bad counsel, a bad example that was shown to you, some bad counsel, some, uh, somebody that you looked up to left, they got the devil on them, and you hurt because you thought they, they was, you thought they was God, you thought they was an angel and couldn't make no mistakes, so now you hurt because they left, now you bitter because you trusted in them, and now you not, you withdrawing yourself, you ain't doing nothing, you have to examine yourself, why am I doing this, why am I behaving contrary to the scriptures? Somebody let you down, you could have had bad parenting or no father, no mother. You have to examine why you act the way you act. If it don't line up with the scriptures, you got to do what you got to do to get it in line with the scriptures. That's, how, that's the only way you're going to overcome that bitterness, that resentment, that anger, whatever it is that you have. Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 9. The book of Isaiah, chapter 58, and verse 9. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity. 
what I want to deal with out of this verse, it says, put away from you the putting forth of the finger. A lot of times when you, you, you're bitter about something, everything is everybody else's fault. What you do? What did you do in this situation? What response, you have to take responsibility for your own actions. Because you may have, you may have, you may have not done nothing wrong in a situation to somebody doing you wrong. But what you got to do is, and that of course, this is talking about, this is more so going into when you was in the tree. You, a lot of things that happened to us when we was children, we couldn't control it. It is what it is. But you still got to move forward from it. But as an adult, you have to look at, you got to take responsibility for your own actions. Was it, did things happen to you because you had a lack of discernment? You seen things, but you didn't say nothing. You seen red flags, but you was like, nah, maybe ain't nothing. You seen things that made you heard things that was off, and you didn't say nothing. You got to take responsibility for your own actions. What part did you have to play for whatever pain that, so, so to say, put you in a spirit of bitterness? What did you do? And even if you didn't do nothing, you still got to examine yourself. Okay, what could, I have done, what could I have done to avoid it so now if it happened again, I can avoid it and, and prevent that pain from happening again by applying the commandments? By call, when I see a red flag, call it out. Point it out. See it. What you have to, we have to take responsibility for our own actions. Because no matter what the situation is, all it takes two to tango. It's saying it says take two to tango. Ain't nothing never all one person fault. We gotta take responsibility for whatever we, we we may have contributed to it. Whether it was lack of discernment, you uh scared to apply Matthew 18, scared to speak up. Anything, we have to take responsibility for our actions. Uh, Hebrews, go ahead. All right, shalom, shalom, y'all. Most high Christ bless. All right, uh, can I get 1 Corinthians 7? It might be 6. 1 Corinthians 6, yeah. In verse 7. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 7, verse 7. 6 and verse 7. Chapter 6, verse 7. 1 Corinthians, chapter 6, and verse 7. Go ahead. Bro now, therefore, there is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to law one with another. Why do ye not rather take wrong? Mm -hmm. Why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? This is one of the main issues I see that makes people bitter, right? They, uh, uh, Officer Simakai had pointed out to her earlier, some people felt as if they got wrong, and they hold on to that thing, right? The Most High God said, why can't, we always look at the Matthews 18, we look at all the other scriptures, right? Why can't we look at this scripture right here? Why can't you suffer being done wrong? You understand? Why can't you suffer when somebody treats you wrong? Yeah, if you read in 1 Peter 2, what does it say? Christ did the same thing. Why can't we? You understand? So sometimes in this truth, to avoid being bitter, you got to learn to take the, the low road, what people call it, take the low, low road and suffer being done wrong. You understand? Because at the end of the day, that's you taking the high road, actually. The most high is saying, well, I will take vengeance if what you deem has been done wrong to you. You understand? Excellent point. Excellent point. Uh, go to Hebrews 12 and 12. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 12. The book of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 12. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. So it says, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. You got to get rid of that doubt, that regret, that fear, that distrust, that pain. Whatever it is that's causing you to be bitter, you got to let shake that stuff off and get up and walk. Get up and walk. Hold that. We're coming right back here. Go to Joshua chapter 1 and verse 6. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 6. Because a lot of that stuff, coming into the truth, we ain't, we ain't used to doing that stuff. We ain't used to applying Matthew 18. We ain't used to, to not yielding into our deal, dealing and acting in our emotions. So to apply Matthew 18, to move on without being de feeling defrauded and stuff like that, it's uncomfortable. It's not normal for us. 
but we got to do it anyway because that's 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 the walk we in. We are Israel. We we are the, a prince. We are the nation that's a prince that has power with God. We got to walk uprightly and show forth a good example. Read that. Joshua chapter 1, verse 6. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. So you got to look at what our forefathers, a lot of the things that our forefathers did. They was being directed to do things that they never, ever thought of doing. Joshua took over after Moses. He was, they was going to take over the land of Canaan. They was going and, 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 and going to war with kingdoms and taking them over. And the Most High said, be strong and of a good courage. Why, was, why would he tell him to be strong and of a good courage? Because he had doubt. He had thoughts of fear. Because he was going into unknown territory. He was doing things that he'd never done before. But he said, be strong and of a good courage. Meaning, hey, I don't care how fearful you feel. I'm, I'm, I'm your God, and you should fear me more than you fear whatever your, your feelings of fear is. I told you to do something, go do it. Be strong and courageous, because I'm not going to tell you to do nothing that you can't do. Be strong and courageous. So in the, in the, in the, um, in the midst of being, having that feeling of doubt, that feeling of fear, still do it anyway. That's, that's what bravery is. That's what courage is. Doing something in spite of you being fearful or you having a, a slight doubt. You do it anyway because that's how your spirit is going to grow. That's how you're going to overcome that bitter spirit. Go back to Hebrews 12 and 13. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 13. And make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. So it says, make straight paths for your feet. Meaning you came into this truth, do what you were called to do. Do what you were called in this truth to do. Wake up the elect, get yourself right, and use your talents, abilities to help build up the nation of Israel. Do that. Don't let nothing take you off course. Don't let nothing no man did. Don't let nothing that your, your mother did, your father, your brother. Don't let nothing that nobody did, an officer, a, a captain, a soldier. Don't let the, nothing that nobody did strip away your crown of life from you. That's what bitterness is. You, you continue on in bitterness, that's exactly what's going to happen. You, you allow somebody to take your seat out of, the, out of the kingdom because you're bitter. You want to hold on to your emotions and your feelings and not apply God's commandments. We are not to do that. Uh, read on. Verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Read the, read the first part of 15. Verse 15. Looking diligently, lest any, male fail, any man fail of the grace of God. So this first part says, so it basically is telling us to be constant, steady, and continual in pushing this truth Unless we fall short, unless we don't get the kingdom. We can't let nothing that any man done. We can't have that much trust in a man that we all know we, we, you stumble, we stumble and fall at times. The scripture tells us a righteous, a just man falls seven times, but he get back up. We can't put our trust in a man that's susceptible to falling like we are. Our trust, to, of course, we got as men as rank and order and structure set up, but you can't have your trust all in the man when that man fall, you fall too. You might not fall out of here, but you fall from your works. You stop putting forth effort. You stop doing things that you was done before. We can't roll in that spirit. That's not what we're here for. The, whatever trials and temp the fire that we go through is supposed to build. We're supposed to let it build us up so that we continue pushing forth this truth, that we continue doing things so that the elect wake up. Read the last part. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. So uh, get the, pull up that definition of root. It should be the last link I posted. Uh, read the second, second definition of the noun. The definition of root, the basic cause, source, or origin of something. So it says the basic cause source or origin of something. Read that second part of uh, Hebrews. 
12 and 15 again. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. So that root of bitterness is whatever, that root is whatever caused you to be bitter. Whatever caused you to be angry. Whatever caused you to have that resentment. Uh, go back to that definition and read from the verb. Go down to the verb, the verb tense and read the second and third definition. Yeah. Establish deeply and firmly. So it says establish deeply and firmly. So when you got bitterness, that means that whatever that whatever caused you to be bitter, that means that you've been meditating on it, you've been rehearsing it in your mind over and over and over and over again. Now you bitter. Now it's it's in, uh, infecting your actions. You're not pushing this truth like you once did before. You're not putting forth your, your all your abilities to making sure that even the school is taken care of. You ain't giving alms like you was giving alms before. You ain't doing the things that you was doing before because you, you hurt from what happened in the past. You hurt from somebody did you wrong in the truth. Somebody did you, somebody did you, you feel like somebody did you wrong and they did it intentionally. So now you hurt. So now, you know what, I ain't, why, why would I give my alms? Why would I put forth my talents? Why would I give, why would I give this and they not gonna appreciate it? You're bitter. You have to get rid of that bitter spirit. The only way you're going to get rid of that bitter spirit is through counsel and applying God's commandments. Uh, read that third one. Definition number three. Cause someone to stand immobile through fear or amazement. So fear, so a bitterness will cause you, it says the root of bitterness is cause someone to stand immobile through fear or amazement. You don't want to do nothing because you fear being hurt. You fear being going through that pain again. Now you're not doing nothing. That's not the spirit that we're supposed to roll in. Remember, verse 12 said, Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet. You have to keep it pushing. Okay, you was hurt? Study, meditate on the scriptures, get some counsel and keep pushing. Keep pushing the truth like you're supposed to. Keep keeping applying God's commandments like you are supposed to. Um... Because bitterness, it says, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you. This trouble just caused you to withhold your talents, withhold you applying the commandments with your brothers and sisters. And what it will cause you to do, it says, it trouble you and thereby many be defiled. It's going to cause you to lose the kingdom at the end of the day. If you don't correct it and get yourself right, you're not going to get the kingdom holding a grudge. Because that's what bitterness is. You're holding a grudge against whatever person it was whether they in the truth or out the truth. That's a grudge. And that's not how we're supposed to roll as, as Israel. That's not the example we're supposed to set forth for those coming in after us. We got to move on. We have to move on. And this, this class is, it may, be, it may be specific to individuals, but this class is specific to Chicago because it ain't no secret. We, we, we had some issues that happened earlier this year. And I don't think we all walked, I don't think we've all moved on from it. So we have to move on. Yeah, we, 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 um, we doing better things, but we got to do bigger things. The Most High ain't call us to just be complacent and, and just be even killed. We got to keep elevating. We got to keep growing. We got to keep doing what we're supposed to be doing. And the only way we're going to do that, we got to get over it, keep it moving. Get over it and keep it pushing. We can't let nothing that happened to us in the past affect what we're doing for the most high. We got we to gotta keep pushing. We got to keep pressing towards the mark. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I, you, I, see, we deliver the truth.